The snows of another winter signal a season of sport to millions who go in for skiing, our country's fastest growing recreation. Fast growing because Americans like the combination of high more than half the year round. Dozens of well-developed tourists lie within short driving distance of Denver, Colorado's mile-high capital. And what all these ski areas, lips and toes. For instance, Arapahoe Basin is just off highway number six. And here, one of Colorado's many necessary for skiers in these Rocky Mountains. You ride up and slide down. But as in any other sport, the beginner often has trouble figuring things out. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And those ski bindings seem complicated at first, too. They're the contraptions that are supposed to keep you and those hickory planks on your feet from parting company. Well, Lulu Bell and her little helper have finally solved the problem of how to strap on those barrel stays. And now comes that first fine, careless rapture. But what she lacks in speed, she makes up for in spirit. There are several schools of thought on ski technique. This is the Praise Allah system. Another man advocates a very low crouch, while the girlfriend is putting her sliding on a, on a broader basis. But after learning how to crawl and to walk, Someday, we hope to arrive at the stage where we can really make tracks. All the ingredients are here. A high hill, deep snow, and a fellow who knows how to make the most of the combination. This is the ultimate goal toward which every skier strives. To be able for a time to beat the laws of balance and of gravity. To volplane down a powder-packed mountainside. There is no thrill in the world to match it. Hansel and Gretel may be babes in the wood, but on the wood of their hickory skis, they really romp down through the powder-dry snow of these Colorado mountains. Now, lots of people ask, what age to start them out at? This young one's about six. His little friend is five. Olympic champion of 1968. And this Wheaties eater is about four years old. But let's switch over to Steamboat Springs, Colorado, where everybody skis. During the annual snow carnival at Steamboat Springs, the townspeople knock off work to join in the fun. This is one of the few ski bands in the world. The main street ain't safe for man or beast when the cowboys and cowgirls of Steamboat mix riding and skiing and lancing. But the main event, ski jumping on one of America's most awesome hills. A national record of over 300 feet was achieved on Howelson Hill here at Steamboat Spring. Long years of experience result in the ability to leap like this. And sometimes this happens. Let's slow down the action and watch this fellow float through the air with the greatest of ease. Art Devlin, one of America's best. Marvin Crawford of Steamboat Springs is 17. Medzi Barber, another top American. Gordon Wren, Olympic team leader. and Art Devlin on the airlift.
But about 60 mountain miles south of Steamboat Springs lies Aspen, Colorado, famed for its magnificent network of down mountain ski trails and its three mile long chairlift. The little town was chosen as the site of the first world ski championships ever held in America. And here are the runs. 14 nations from the five continents of the world united at Aspen in the friendly rivalry of the FIS World Ski Championships. There's hard, tough training in store for the teams assembled here. Aspen's famed chairlift takes them 3,300 feet above town. The halfway station coming up, the Aspen lift is divided into two sections. Yes, it's kind of too bad those chairs won't accommodate two. But we'll young lady on up to the sun deck. 11,300 feet up on the tip top of Aspen Mountain. Yes, refreshments are plenty up here at the sun deck. A cooling drink while you acquire that timberline tan. But the world champion contestants buckle down to their training, working out on trial slalom courses. Here, Swiss coach Arnold Gladhart lays out a test run. The idea is to ski between those poles. Christian Ruby has a go at it. Followed by champion George Schneider, both of the Swiss team. But coach Gladhart says, nine, 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 nine. You got the goddamn corners closer, boys. And the slalom training goes on with a world championship at stake. Higher on Aspen Mountain, the boys are test cruising the terrific downhill course laid out by Dick Durrance, former American champion. This nasty collection of hop, skip, and jumps is known as the dam. Most of the boys run it straight like Aegon Schupp of Austria. Others are more hesitant. And here comes Christian Pravda, the Austrian ace. Now watch Pravda make a spectacular 100-foot leap over the dam. Follow the leader. Here's a racer who's having his ups and downs. Kind of looks as if he wants to take our camera along with him. Yourself, But with Dick Durrance's guide, we'll prove the law that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. With time out for one short detour here. Yes, as cameraman Durrance's shadow leads the way, we take you on a fast run down the actual course over which the world champions are to race. Come along with us on a downhill. Now we're approaching the almost vertical cliff called Niagara. We'll need a few more lessons before we shush this one. So we'll park a while and let the other boys show you how the top ski racers ride a 60 mile an hour shoot. Aegon Schupp has plenty of knee action. Another Austrian ace, Walter Schuster, clatters over the marble hard dips of the Finnish gully. But Eddie Mal digs a few divots. You think that was something? Watch Ernie McCullough of Canada in a ski maneuver known mildly as a sits mark. Here's the sits, and there's the mark. 
Now training's over, it's time for the real race, the McCoy. Opening day in Aspen, there's an impressive ceremony. The ski teams of 14 nations march up the streets of Aspen toward the assembly ground. The cream of the ski crop from America, Switzerland, Sweden, Norway, Yugoslavia, and Italy are represented. There's one man from Holland and two girls from England. Finland, France, and Canada are here, as well as Austria, Argentina, and Chile, a united nations of ski. Governor Lee Naus of Colorado officially opens the World Slalom Downhill Championships of 1950. And now the formalities are over and actual racing begins. A prime favorite in the women's giant slalom, Celina Zeghi of Italy, called the Tigress. Georgette Joliet Miller of France, one of the best of the field. Celina Zeghi starts off, first racer of the 1950 FIS championships to officially baptize the twisting path of the giant slalom. The three quarter mile run is a grueling blend of slalom and downhill. Rosemary Bloyer of Switzerland gets a send-off. Erika Maringer of Austria, 1948 Olympic downhill winner, takes her turn. Lucienne Smith of France is next. And red kerchief Dagmar Rohm takes off in a hurry now. 21-year-old miss from Innsbruck, Austria, has been carefully coached by the all-time master of the slalom, Anton Zalos. Dagmar Rome in mid-course. Katie Rodolph of the United States team, slithering down the tricky giant slalom. A misstep, and she tumbles. But the 19-year-old from Hayden, Colorado, wastes no time in regaining her race tempo. <music> Janet Burr leaps over a cornice in the race against time. And now one of the most spectacular spills of the meet. The unlucky lass is Margaret Owen of Canada. Fortunately, few of the racers were hurt. The youngest member of the fabulous Austrian squad, Lydia Gestrein, winding up the giant slalom. The shooting's over, and the winner, beauteous Dagmar Rohm, with the first gold medal for Austria. The ski patrol now clears the runs for the men's giant slalom. Fred Belmar of Denver, president of the National Ski Association, threads the starting gate. The crew of Longines timers is ready. And Silvio Alvara of Italy starts the giant slalom, followed by Ole Dalman of Sweden. Here's the way Swiss champion Eddie Rominger handles the course. James Coutet, the fabulous Frenchman, former FIS champion, snow plows through a section of the giant slalom. And Tina Mule, one of Yugoslavia's entries in action. He's down, but not for the count. Canada's Bob Richardson, a hard luck run, but the boys never say down. Leon Goodman of America, running into trouble. A real nosedive, Francois Beau of France, 
Luis de Ritter of Argentina loses valuable time. A fall like this often means a race that's lost. And the no-fall winner, our old friend Zeno Calo of Italy. The next day, the women's slalom was held. The run is a good deal shorter than the giant slalom. Nevertheless, corsetter Fred Eselin has laid out a real test for the girls. A quarter of a mile long, a 500-foot drop in altitude. And veteran racer Rosemary Bleuer of Switzerland leading off. Watch carefully as the Swiss Miss darts and twists down through the S-curves of the slalom. Racy Hammerer of Austria is next. 18-year-old Andy Mead from Vermont, a top United States racer. And the winner again is Austria's Dagmar Rohn, now holder of two FIS blue ribbons. While the flags of the United Nations at Aspen and Ski Sport wave at the foot of the course, contestants prepared for the running of the men's slalom. Eddie Rominger looks over the course. James Coutet of France says, hello. Georges Schneider of Switzerland memorizes his line, as does Zeno Kolo. And here's the start of the men's slalom. Rudy Graf of Switzerland on the hill. The tension of waiting to start shows on Penti Alonen of Finland. Every second, every fraction of a second counts. 1938 world slalom champion, James Coutet, gunning down the white ribbon. Yes, Coutet is to slalom skiing what Bobby Locke is to golf or Ted Williams to baseball. The tension mounts as times are recorded. Henri Oraille, Olympic downhill medalist, fell at the top of the course. He's taking chances now, hoping to make up lost second. America's top slalom racer, Jack Reddish, coming down. And here's how the great Zeno Colo runs his race. Austria's Christian Pravda, handling his skis with flawless skill. Pravda through the finish. And finally, European champion, George Schneider, top favorite in the event, reaching for speed. And the favorite wins, slalom champions of the world, George Schneider of Switzerland, Dagmar Rohm of Austria. Now Cellino Zeghi of Italy gets ready to lead off the women's downhill. Dagmar Rome and her boyfriend take on some fuel. The first girl, Annalise Schuproxoff of Austria, starts down the long mile and a half run. Lucien Schmidt of France. Olympic champion Erika Maringer coming down into the snow bowl. Canada's Sandra Tomlinson at the same corner. Another mademoiselle shows her mettle, Georgette Joliere Miller of France. Katie Rodolphe from Hayden, Colorado, gunning hard. 
Ortiz, top American girl with fifth place. Dagmar Rowe marches the scoreboard. The crowd's excited, too. Trudy Beiser of Austria, winner of the downhill. Biggest event of the 1950 FIS championships, the thrilling men's downhill. The racers head up toward the start. Let's meet some of them. Egon Schupp of Austria. Desiree Lacroix of France. In the red sweater, Matej Lukanj of Yugoslavia. Francois Beau and Lacroix, both of the French team. Coach Minardi of Italy, giving his boys a final pep talk. Ready at the top. Ready at the finish. And ready at the starting line. The flag is up. And the downhill begins. Number one, Yves Latre of Canada shoots the rapids. Followed by Bernard Perron of Switzerland. So far, so good. But watch Francois Beau of France crack up and then put her in reverse. Aegon Shutt jumps over the mountain. And Zeno Colo, top seeded favorite. Skids on one wheel, settles down on the main highway again. From our way stations now, we'll show you the great Italian running the entire course. Out of Spar Gulch on the Bell Mountain Traverse. Down Niagara Falls. Into the last corkscrew gully. And finally, through the finish. Up top side, Alvara of Italy is airborne. Lacroix takes off, too. But Ernie McCullough noses over in a fancy crash landing. But now, let's go through Spar Gulch and on to Bell Mountain Traverse. down to the almost vertical ice cliff known as Niagara. Here there are thrills aplenty. Christian Pravda highballs down the big schuss and decides here to give one leg a rest. It's a downhill race, but Stein Eriksson is a jumping Norwegian. While Yugoslavia's Tina Mule almost falls overboard. Another Eriksson brother, this is Marius running the gauntlet. And at this point, Marius feels as though you could stir his knees with a spoon. Sharp curve ahead, but Andy Tommy of Canada didn't see it. And the show goes on. Ski patrol to the rescue. Andy wasn't hurt. But still, this must feel something like being shot out of a cannon. Gordon Morrison of Canada makes a game finish. The racers come on. Two and a half miles of leg-punishing, heart-pounding racing down one of the toughest ski courses ever set. Their style and their luck varies. 
but racers from the Alps of Europe and the Andes of South America are unanimous in saying that Colorado snow hills are second to none. And in skiing, there is good reason for the saying, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Jan Arendts of Norway tumbles in Shusguli, but he's down for only a very short count. Watch America's Dean Perkins heading for the finish. And heading is the right word. Fred Ruby goes around and around and around. All that long, thrill-packed afternoon, the world's best ski racers shust and boom down the great championship track on Aspen Mountain a sight never to be forgotten by those who saw it, a race that will long be remembered by those who ran it. And at long last, the exciting downhill race and the FIS meet is over. The winner, I bet you knew it all along, Zeno Colo, the popular Italian. And so ends the 1950 World Ski Championships at Aspen. The first ever held in America. We gather with the sports folk of a score of nations to congratulate the winners. Trudy Beiser of Austria, George Schneider, Switzerland, Zeno Colo, Italy, and Dagmar Rohm, Austria. The men and women of many nations who have gathered in Aspen will leave now for Hill Home, and they will carry with them the memory of happy times and good sport in the mountains of America. For here, too, they felt at home at home in the high hills, the deep snow, and the sunshine of Colorado.